Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I'm getting real about foreplay. I'm going to be sharing with you some of my top tips for acing it, for being an absolute foreplay pro. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you keep on watching. Guys, gals, non-binary people, you're getting yourself in the mood. Don't want to be really curling them like this. Let me start that again. <laughs> Can I get anything right? So before we get into today's video, I have to give a big shout out to my sponsor. They are a long-term partner of mine and I'm proud to announce I am also now their ambassador and that is Moments Condoms. Moments Condoms are made for anyone who wants to have a good time, but their true passion is empowering women and femme people to celebrate and protect their sexual health and take the stigma away from purchasing condoms. Moments Condoms are designed for pleasure and and durability. Made from premium quality latex, each and every condom is quality tested to ensure you always feel protected. Emblazoned with fun slogans to take the intimidation factor out of carrying condoms, Moments want everyone to feel confident about prioritizing their sexual health. Because having safe sex shouldn't be taboo or gender specific. Grab a purse-sized tin or try a pack of their new Ultra Thin range, which comes with extra lubrication and is available in regular, large and and extra large. You can find them at over 600 Coles supermarkets Australia wide or hit the link below this video and use code NADIA50 for 50% off when you spend $20 or more. So first things first, I really want to break down this idea of foreplay before I go any further because I actually have a few issues with it. The term suggests that foreplay is something that happens separate to sex. And it also suggests that sex is something that essentially can only occur when there is penetration. And this is a very heteronormative idea of sex that excludes a lot of people. A lot of people have sex in ways that don't involve penetration or in ways that don't involve penises. Foreplay is actually just a part of sex. We shouldn't be separating sex into these different sort of segments and we shouldn't be making sex so goal orientated. If we say that foreplay is the thing that happens before a penis goes into a vagina and then a penis ejaculates, what we're saying is that sex can only happen when a penis is going into a vagina and we're also saying that sex is over once the person with the penis has ejaculated. And again, this can really exclude a lot of people's pleasure, particularly people who have vulvas, because hopefully if you've been watching this channel for a while, you will know that people with vulvas tend to take a little longer to reach orgasm during partnered sex. So I will be giving you tips today on being better in the bedroom. And I have titled this video, foreplay tips because so many of you do come to this channel looking for advice on foreplay but I want to say that it's not the wording that I'm going to use moving forward because foreplay really should just be part of sex rather than this thing that happens separately to it. Now with that said let's get into my very first tip. Great sex begins with great arousal. That's because if you are not adequately aroused when you go into having sex, sex is not going to be comfortable and if you're not comfortable you're very, very unlikely to reach climax. People with vulvas need to get lubricated in order to have pleasurable sex and lubrication happens when we get turned on and people with penises can have more enjoyable sex when their penises are hard though it's absolutely not a prerequisite and again penises get hard when they are aroused so arousal is really key for making sex more comfortable and enjoyable and more likely to result in an orgasm. Now, arousal is something that happens predominantly in the brain, or at least we know from the research that's where it starts for most of us. So one of the number one things you can do to get your partner to be really aroused is to actually stimulate their mind. And you can do this by creating anticipation. Anticipation is one of the most underrated tips 
to really get someone in the mood and to have fantastic sex. So often we rush into sex. We go straight to removing all of our clothes and touching one another's genitals. And there is no time to build anticipation because the anticipation of sex and clothing removal, well, it's already happened. So we can't be anticipating it. So a simple way to create that anticipation is to slow everything right down. Rather than taking each other's clothes off immediately, spend anywhere from five to 10 minutes, both with your clothes fully on, just kissing and touching over the clothes like you did when you were horny teenagers. Really take time to just enjoy each other fully clothed. Touch your partner's face, have long, extended, passionate kissing. This is something we particularly know for people with vulvas is super important. Research shows that people with vulvas experience intense arousal during extended, passionate kissing and also tease one another by touching those areas, those erogenous zones, like over the breasts or the chest or down over the thighs, but doing it over the clothing so you are creating that sense of anticipation. If you want to take it even a step further to build that sense of anticipation, you can start before you and your partner have even laid eyes on each other by doing something called sexting. Now, most of you are probably familiar with sexting. Sexting is simply just sending one another messages that have a sexy or even sexually explicit tone to them. Now, a lot of people don't know where to begin with sexting. They might feel a bit embarrassed or a bit nervous or a bit unsure of what to say, or they might feel intimidated like in order to sext, they have to take pictures of themselves and send them. But sexting can actually be way more simple than this. Sexting is really just about planting a seed in your partner's mind for what they can expect later on. It's about building that anticipation. So what I would suggest to do some really great, really erotic sexting is simply just to recount to your partner the last time you had sex with them. So talk about how their skin felt, talk about how they tasted, talk about how good it felt to be inside them, talk about even the smell of their perfume or their cologne, the sounds they made, talk about all the things that were really sexy about your partner that really got you off last time you had sex. Simply recounting the last time that you and your partner got down and dirty is really going to help to plant those seeds of anticipation and excitement and desire in both of your minds so that by the time you see each other, you are going to be dying to rip each other's clothes off. One of the most underrated ways to get your partner in the mood and make sex more pleasurable is to include digital stimulation. Now, when I talk about digital stimulation, I'm talking about stimulation with fingers and hands. So if your partner has a vulva, you can digitally stimulate them by taking two fingers and adding some personal lubricant to the top section of your fingertips. And if you don't have personal lubricant, saliva also works perfectly well. Well, and then just circling them around the clitoris. And that's going to help to encourage blood flow into the clitoris, which is going to intensify all of the sensations and the pleasure and also bring your partner closer to climax. And if your partner has a penis, the best way to stimulate it manually is to ensure that the penis is lubricated. Again, that can be with saliva from giving them oral sex or it can be via just applying some personal lubricant to the shaft of the penis and then wrapping your hand around it and moving your hand up and down, up and down. And what you're trying to do with the motion and the pressure on your hand is to essentially recreate the feeling of the penis going into a bodily orifice like a vagina or an anus or even a mouth. And you can actually every so often just stop and concentrate some pressure around the head of the penis because the head of the penis has more nerve endings in it. And it is probably the closest thing that the penis has to the clitoris in terms of that concentration of nerves. I made a more detailed video about some of my favorite foreplay tips, which I will link up here. If there are more techniques that you would like me to go into depth on, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Be respectful as always. Don't forget to go and check out Moments. They are obviously an incredible sponsor of this channel, but they are also huge advocates for breaking down the shame and stigma around 
using and carrying protection and i'm a huge advocate for having safe protected sex which is why i partnered up with them if you're not subscribed here go ahead and hit that subscribe button because i'm making new sex education content every single week give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and i'll see you all in the next video Bye.